<laughs> you are such a genuine gem. I wanted to kind of mix it up on this channel and I know I'm not whispering so I hope that that's okay. I wanted to do more of a quiet advice series where I talk quieter but I don't, I'm not whispering because I know that you guys sometimes like just my regular voice so I thought this could be a good mixture and also quiet advice is kind of for me advice that I'm not going to be screaming at you. It's not like this is what you have to do and this is, you know, the best advice and I know all. It's almost like me just sharing lessons I've learned and what I think helps me and could help you. And so if that's something you're interested in, I can totally make this a series. Just give this a thumbs up and let me know down below because this episode, we're going to be talking about self-care and working from home in a pandemic. I think these are, of course, very pertinent right now, but they, they need to be talked about and it needs to be more widely discussed how this is affecting us and our our mental states and how this is going to change everything in our lives for the rest of our lives even if suddenly there's a cure and we all go back to how it was before i don't think it will ever be exactly how it was before so my first kind of advice tip i don't even want to make this like one two three just kind of like a flow a natural flow of of my mind and just letting you know how i feel so something that i have learned is that you will not be as productive as you were before no matter how self-motivated you are no matter how many incentives and goals that you give yourself it will never be as easy as it was prior to this. You have so much more on your mind now and it's it's different in every way, even if you worked from home prior. Even if you are so used to this life of not going out, you're an introvert like me, there is still going to be so many things, little things that you didn't think that you did. Like going to the grocery store, like going to the movies, that you are mourning and not being able to see family, not being able to just, you know, maybe go on a date. Like, there's so much that you are not doing right now that you did before that could be, you know, means of a release from work or from your family or just from the inside of your home and from your mind that you now lack and so being productive is going to be even harder especially because you feel like you have to be there all the time because you literally aren't doing anything else but just because you're not doing anything else doesn't mean that you need to fill that time with more work because ultimately you will get drained now i think that as a society, we all strive off of keeping things the same. We hate change. We love routine. And so we're almost scared when things do change and we don't like it to happen too often. So when this virus happened and we had to make changes, we were out of control for so long. And so I think at this point, as a society, we've adapted to this virus and called it our new normal instead of thinking of changing it back to the way it was because now we've been in this for months and months and months and doing something different would be even scarier because we knew how how difficult it was to uproot our entire lives and to become you know hermits at home when this all happened so the fact that we could have to suddenly go back to how we were before is just as as scary to us and i think on the opposite end of that is that some people want to get back to normal so badly and they have never really chosen to change their lives for the virus for this whole situation so they're the ones running around without masks they're going and traveling they're doing things that they know they're not supposed to because they didn't want to change in the first place. They didn't do it at all. And so I think 
there are these two separate ends and for your own sanity and self-care if you were one of those who have been participating right now I think it can be hard because you're getting asked to go back out to go work in the office again to go get drinks with friends to go on dates to go see people to just go out and about more but you have a right to say no to those people who never changed for the situation because you have you have been through a lot changing and doing what was right so don't give that up now just for peer pressure do it for yourself do it because you know it's what's right i also want to touch on the fact that we are in a very traumatic situation and we are all trauma bonding right now basically as a world as a society, it's one of, you know, the times when we have been most connected. And on although there are many, many ways that we are not connected and that we still do not love each other, do not support each other, and are, are not good to each other, in a way of trauma from the virus, we are connected, and whether we like it or not, and we have trauma bonded. And so we all, to a certain extent, know what we're going through and how difficult it is right now. So I think we need to give a little space and a little leniency to the people who are going backwards in life at this moment. And you, if you are giving yourself a hard time for this, you need to you need to let go of that. Because I think right now in our lives, we're not supposed to be making giant leaps for our plans for the future. You know, there are many people moving back in with family, taking a job that is way below qualifications just to make money after they've been laid off. They have people pushing back studies because they can't afford it or they don't want to do it online. People who just feel lost in general and don't know what to do. And that's totally okay. We can't, we can't make fun of people or make them feel bad for taking a step back. Because right now, that's okay. It's okay to just feel completely lost and feel like, well, this whole thing is making my life go backwards. But because of the strength you will have when it's over and what you will know, what, what lessons you've learned, you are growing. Just because it feels like you're stepping back doesn't mean that you are. You see, life isn't just this path that goes like this. There are many, many differences and just because it feels like you're going back doesn't mean that you're not just jumping around for a little while, making some zigzags rather than it just being a straight line. That was cheesy, but it's true. You're allowed to be angry, whether that's your government not doing the right thing, whether that's people you know not doing the right thing, whether you just want to get out of the house and you're so angry that this is still happening. It's okay, and it's quite therapeutic to let that out. You know, put on a song that makes you feel this passion and run for an hour, or just, you know, sing at the top of your lungs, dance around, thrash about. However, living in anger, that's what makes you miserable. And if you don't know where to put this burning passion that you have, burning anger, you know, turn it into art. Turn it into good for the world. Create a business that helps others write about what makes you cry. I mean, there are so many ways to focus that energy rather than taking it out on other people or even taking it out on yourself. Because you're still allowed to be angry, but you can't let it control you. The next thing I want to touch on is to get off of your phone and communicate with people. I have found that communication during these times of social media can make you feel an empty satisfaction. And what I mean by that is that we see so many comments, conversations, people in general, people talking, people discussing people's opinions, arguments, rants, that we... And these are to, not even to us, just online posts that we see or comments that we respond to, that we feel like we are getting all this communication, that we are getting what we need as far as that. But it's really empty list when you think about it. And you feel the problem with it being empty but still being fulfilled, or you think it's still being fulfilled, is that you're so exhausted that you're not talking to people who truly matter, the people in your life. And you're putting off things that you could talk to about to them because you're so exhausted. 
And so take a break from the empty kind of communication and connection. Put it down for a little while and see if you have that energy back to talk to people who matter to you. And see how much better it feels to have that kind of thing fill you up rather than the empty kind. Something else that I have been doing, whether it comes to work, just self-care, personal goals, is to give yourself goals. Even if they are the smallest things, it will make you feel better. It will make you feel like there's something to look forward to. Maybe when you reach those goals, you get a reward. I mean, I, in fact, just ordered some makeup. I told myself I was having a really hard day. I wasn't productive and I needed to finish a script for my true crime channel. And I told myself, look... If you finish this script, you get to buy some makeup at Sephora because I've been wanting to buy some. And so I told myself if that day I finished it, I would get makeup. That really did make me productive. I finished the script and I bought my makeup. And although objects, you know, can't grant you all the satisfaction of the world, sometimes, you know, a little cupcake, a piece of makeup will make you feel better in the moment. And looking forward to things like that is what keeps you going when there's nothing to keep you going in the real world. There is no planning that can be done for society, so sometimes planning your days will keep you sane. Now, this is a tip for people who work from home, whether you have always done it, whether you just started doing it, and that is that you are not available 24-7. Just because you are always in the same place does not give your office, your coworkers' rights to constantly contact you. You are still allowed to have work hours where you shut off afterwards and you don't do anything. And your brain will thank you for that if you do. Because even your boss will thank you. You will thank yourself. Because you will be so much better the next day if you give yourself time to relax. You will be so much more productive, especially if you actually take off weekends and you just do nothing. You allow yourself to just relax. Now, if any of you struggle with mental health, mental illness, especially depression, anxiety, and staying home all the time is really getting to you or you feel like you just can't do anything at all, well, I do always recommend to get help and to go to therapy. You know, there's a lot of online things right now for your safety. But if you've done all those and you still find it really hard to work, I want to tell you that even just a little bit of something is wonderful. And sometimes, you know, you hear all the time, don't work from your bed. You need to work at a desk. You need to get up out of bed, make your bed every day. Sometimes, Just that task is daunting enough that you don't even want to do that. And you're like, well, I can't make my bed, so I can't work today. Okay, so what if you bring your laptop to bed with you and do a little something there? Type away in your PJs. You know, sometimes you have to adapt to what your brain needs that day. Even if all of the millionaires, even if all the CEOs tell you that's wrong, they don't know your brain. And right now, it's not about being the most productive, the most successful. It's about surviving and getting through each day and, you know, trying to keep your job, trying to do the best you can and looking forward to the future while there is really nothing to look forward to. There's a lot going on. And so if you have to stay in your gosh darn PJs all week long and work from bed and get the bare minimum done while you eat a cake a day, you do that. And I will cheer you on for that. And you should cheer yourself on for that. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't look yourself in the mirror and think, my God, I'm a mess. Look at yourself and think, I did it. I did something today. And that's, that's all I could do. That's all, that's all I was capable of today. And that's okay. So I really hope that these kind of tips, advice, just me speaking to you kind of helped you and made you feel better. And I know that right now it's it's difficult all around, no matter what you're doing, and there's not a lot of hope in the world, but we will get through this. We will be able to be free and celebrate with each other once again, hug our loved ones. There will come a time for that. You just have to keep telling yourself that, even if you don't know. Keep that hope alive, just that little spark of hope. 
because it means everything. So, again, if you like this quiet advice series, please let me know down below. Also, tell me what kind of topics you'd want me to talk about. I was thinking of doing like a, a body changes, positive self-talk to your body and, you know, body positivity and all that. Positivity. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> body positivity. Um, and just any other kind of things you want me to talk about because I, I love just sitting here and talking to you guys and I'm not trying to preach at you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad or anything. I'm not trying to say I'm better than. I mean, I struggle with all these things that I talk to you about. I'm just trying to be real and trying to tell you what's helped me and what I continually struggle with on a daily too. And I hope that it it sparks something in you and makes you feel a little, at least a little better. So, yeah. I love you. Bye.